Hello and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I sure appreciate it. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and click that notification bell so you know when my next video is. Today we're going to use the Craft Your Life Kit Floral Acanthus from Altenew. These kits come with <coughs> a stamp set, a coordinating die, stencils, and an embossing folder. We're only going to use the stamp set and the die today, and we're going to do some messy watercolor techniques. This is the only way I can watercolor, and I think it's fun, easy, and I always love the results. So we're going to start by stamping the large image. We're going to stamp this on some Canson SL XL watercolor paper. Make sure to prep your um, paper with an anti-static powder tool and when you remove a large clear stamp from its packaging make sure you remove the packaging from the stamp not the stamp from the packaging this way you don't pull and distort or stretch your stamp it doesn't matter if your packaging rolls <clears throat> we're going to stamp this first one in black and we're going to stamp it a couple times. Watercolor paper tends to have a bit of texture to it, so we want to make sure we get a good, crisp image, especially when we're working with such a large stamp. So I'm going to stamp it once, press it down with my uh, stamp press tool, ink it up again, and then stamp it one more time. <clears throat> And then when I am happy with my image and it's completely covered, I'm going to remove it from my Misty and then we're going to sprinkle on some Altenew clear embossing powder. <clears throat> Make sure you cover your entire image. Um, tap off gently. When I say tap off, I mean gently tap off any extra from your watercolor paper. <clears throat> Pour everything back into the container and set that aside. Then we're going to heat emboss this with a heat tool. This takes a little bit of time. It, there is a lot of images here and just take your time. You, you will see it change from powder to being all shiny and that lets you know that your um, the magic has happened. <coughs> and I'm going to heat it from the front and the back to prevent a little bit of warping. I'm going to clean my uh, stamp really, really well because we're going to stamp with clear embossing ink next. So we're going to stamp again on a piece of Canson XL watercolor paper. And we're going to prep our paper with an anti-static powder tool. We're going to ink up our image with um, Altenews embossing ink. We're going to stamp that twice. And then we're going to just pour on some clear embossing powder. You could use white. I just have the clear here, so that's what I grabbed. Once the image is covered, I'm going to tap off any extra, pour everything back in the container and set that aside. We're going <clears> to <throat> um, heat set this with our heat tool, waiting to see it go from powder to being all shiny. Again, heating from the front and the back to prevent a little bit of that warping. And then we're going to get ready to do our messy watercolor techniques. So I'm going to start my first uh, watercolor technique using Altenew's Spring Garden watercolor brush marker set. I'm going to use Moss, Midnight Violet, and Rubellite from this set. I'm going to use a water pen and a heat tool here. So I'm going to take my water and I'm going to lay down my water over my image inside that embossed line. I'm going to lay down a little bit of pigment with my Moss Water Color Brush Marker. I'm going to heat set that, add a little bit more water, a little bit more pigment, and I'm going to this time concentrate that pigment more towards the base of my leaves as I want that base to be deep and dark to give a little dimension, and then I want the outside of my leaves to be much lighter. And I'll just keep layering until I'm happy and then I'll move on to my other images. Again, laying down the water, the pigment, then heat setting. So next, when all my leaves are done, I'm going to do the same for my flower images. I'm going to lay down that water, put down some midnight violet pigment here, um, use 
my brush marker and my water brush pen to pull that pigment all the way out to the edges of my uh, flower, um, heat setting in between, and when I am happy, I will clean off my water brush and we will put water over our last floral image here and then drop down our rubellite um, pigment. And you can see I'm just kind of squiggling around. It is fast and easy. Pulling out that pigment to the edges of my flower and heat setting it. Um, the watercolor paper here is pretty saturated at this point. So even though I'm heat setting it, I will set it aside to allow that paper to completely dry. Next, we're going to grab our um, other image and want, do a messy watercolor technique. This time I'm using Distress Oxides. I'm using Bundled Sage and Rustic Wilderness, Wilted Violet and Villainous Potion, and Abandoned Coral and Kitsch Flamingo. Uh, I pulled out my um, glass media mat from Tonic Studios, and I'm just squishing my pigment down on my work surface. I'm going to add some drops of water to that pigment to activate it. I'm going to use my water brush pen and a paintbrush. So I'm going to lay down some water over my image with my water brush and then I'll use a small paintbrush and I'm going to grab that pigment. And for my leaves, I don't know why, but for my leaves I started with my darkest pigment which is the Rustic Wilderness. I'm laying that down at the base and towards the center of the leaves. I will clean that off and then I will um, grab that lighter color, the bundled sage, and add that to the tips of the leaves, blending carefully where the two pigments meet. The water just kind of helps the pigment flow as well, hence why I am calling this messy water color. So we're going to do this for all the leaves. Here, again, we lay down that water first. We're going to grab some of that pigment with our paintbrush. Going to grab the darkest, then I'm going to go in with the lightest. And I'm going to do this for all the leaves. And it's just super quick, super easy, looks good. This is my type of watercoloring. Um, I love the messy look. And it totally fits me and my style and it fits my lack of ability to really watercolor to perfection. So once my leaves are done, I'm going to clean that paintbrush really, really well, and then we're going to move on to um, our purple flower, and this time I'm going to start with the wilted violet, and I'm going to lay that all over my flower on top of that water, and then I'm just going to drop in some of that villainous potion at the base of my petals. Then I'm going to put my water all over my last flower here, drop in that kitsch flamingo. You can see that the water just really takes that pigment and disperses it for you. Add that abandoned coral at the base of my petals and I'm all done. I'm going to set this aside to dry and then we're going to quickly assemble our cards. I'm going to die cut everything. So I'm going to start with my first card here. This is the watercolor brush marker technique. And I just put that large die on that image, hold it in place with some easy C tape, and then I just run this through my Gemini Junior. And I'm going to run that over, run it through, bring it back, and I'm going to pop out the images. Um, this sure makes for short work when one die cuts out so many images. So. <clears throat> We're going to take and grab the Simon Says Stamp Pinpoint Starlets Embossing Folder and just an A2 piece of uh, Nina 110 cardstock. I'm going to spritz it with a little bit of water and then I'm just going to run that through my Platinum 6 following the correct sandwich for that machine um, to create a nice little embossed background panel. I'm going to kind of see where I want my flowers on this panel and then I'm going to decide which sentiment from the stamp set I want to use. I chose to use the hugs. I stamped the hugs in black, sprinkled it with embossing powder, heat set that. I did that three times so the hugs has a raised image to it and then I just run that through 
my mini blossom die cut machine and then I actually ran the hubs through two more times so I could layer those up and have some dimension to my sentiment. <clears throat> when these are all done and adhered together, I assemble my card. I put my flowers on with foam tape, put my leaves on with just liquid glue, stuck my hugs up there and added some Studio Katcha Arctic Breeze Pearls and that card was done. Now I'm just going to do my second card. We're going to again die cut all those images. And this watercolor is much more soft. I couldn't tell you which one's my favorite. I like them both for different reasons. I'm going to use a piece, piece of parchment cardstock here from Alt New, and I'm going to run that through the die cut machine with the Pink Fresh Studio diagonal stitches rectangles for a background panel. And here I'm just trying to decide what I want my card to look like. I decide just to use one flower image and an extra leaf. I will use some of those other um, other images like that purple flower in another card I'll show on social media here soon. I'm just trying to decide where I want my sentiment now that I decided on which one. I decide the lower right hand corner. I'm going to stamp that in black and I do stamp it twice to get a nice clear image. And then I take this panel and I am going to grab a piece of fun foam that has score tape on the front and the back of the fun foam. It's a great way to add dimension. It completely covers the background panel here. And once I have that on there, I'm going to stick this on a heavyweight card base. However, once I got it put on the card base, I decided I wanted some black splatter on my parchment panel. So I just used a little bit of um, post-it tape. And I just put post-it tape over my card base so I don't get any black on that white. And then I'm just going to take some of the Altenew Jet Black ink spray put a little bit on acrylic block with a little tiny bit of water and just flick it on my parchment panel with my with a small brush. I'm going to obviously take those things and wash them right away. And then I very carefully peel off that post-it tape as to not smear any of that black ink. And then I just put my um, flower and my leaf. I just glue them directly to the parchment and I put on some Lucy's Little Things Rainforest um, gems and that card is done. So here you will see both cards. I hope you enjoyed them both. I hope you try some messy watercoloring and I can't wait to see you again. Thanks for stopping by.